We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. We open this series talking about the big things Spokane has done in its history, like our World's Fair, Bloomsday, Hoopfest, Gonzaga basketball, our downtown reinventing itself time and again. Houston is home to big things too, like, say, putting a human being on the moon. This is Texas, after all. Go big or go home. It's also one of the most welcoming places in the country, with 20% of their population foreign-born. They boast the largest Nigerian and second largest Vietnamese populations in America, and they welcome their neighbors in times of need, like over 200,000 of them during Hurricane Katrina. And they're survivors. In each of the last seven years, they've endured seven natural disasters, including Hurricane Harvey in 2017. Those are the times that test your grit as a community, and they also have a way of bringing people together. As it turns out, cooperation may be the most important element of Houston's DNA, and it's the key ingredient to their many remarkable successes, including managing their homeless population over two and a half times better than any city in America over the last 10 years. And Houston isn't satisfied. They plan to reduce the amount of people experiencing homelessness by another 50% over the next five years, and also send a man or woman to Mars. Is it possible to provide housing and help to the people who are experiencing homelessness and also reclaim the streets, parks, and downtown we love so much? Houston's done it. Why can't we? As we've documented throughout this series, Spokane's population of those experiencing homelessness is the highest in its history and putting a strain on government, business, and neighborhoods alike. But Spokane isn't alone. In fact, over the last 10 years, the rise in Spokane's homeless point-in-time count, as required by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, looks eerily similar to many cities in America and what Houston's looked like in 2012. But over the last 10 years, as Spokane's HUD point-in-time homeless count has increased an astounding 64%, Houston's point-in-time homeless count has decreased 63%. To get the complete story, you have to start when things were near rock bottom for Houston. 2012. Mark Eichenbaum is the special assistant to the mayor for homeless initiatives for the city of Houston. He's been with the city for 12 years and remembers 2012 well, then serving in the administration of three-term mayor Anise Parker. Every graph for homelessness across the country that I've been seeing looks like this. And you guys, what, your lowest per capita homeless population in the nation of any major city? Didn't used to always be like that. Um, and uh, we used to have the sixth largest population of individuals experiencing homelessness in the country. You're in trouble with HUD. Uh, you're right. We were named a priority uh, community by HUD, which is not a good designation. Right. We had, uh, on any given night, over 8,500 individuals sleeping on our streets and in our shelters. Um, What's that number today? Uh, now it's, it's, it's around 3,000. Um, far less than half. Far less than half. You know, not only do we have to do big things to get there, we have to continue to keep that momentum or else we will regress. Um, I think there's tens of thousands of people throughout our city, throughout our state and country that are experiencing housing instability every day. And those individuals are falling into homelessness. And we have to get more folks out of homelessness than become homeless to get a net reduction. And that's right. the big challenge that Houston struggles, struggled with, and we still struggle with it today, and it's what every other city in the country deals with. And because there's so many perceptions around homelessness, the perception possibly is Houston's doing a good job with homelessness, and that word gets out, and suddenly people are moving from outside the area into Houston. That was a you know, concern before we even started our yeah. coordinated collaborative system. Folks said, you're going to you're going to house people with services and with no strings attached. People are going to flood into Houston. And the reality is, is it's just not true. And the data shows the vast majority of folks are from Southeast Texas. 
that are experiencing homelessness in Houston. And the percentage has not changed over time. So you're dealing it's with your own that. population. It's, we're dealing with our own population. When you look at permanent supportive housing itself, it's about 80% success rate na national, nationwide. And we're, and we're right there at 90%. I think when we started, we, you know, we, there was preconceptions. Um, folks would say, you know, we drive by them, we see them. There's no way we can house them. There's no way they would stay housed. Right. They need to be fixed. They need to be reformed. The data shows it's not true. Uh, that these folks, we are moving folks who have been living on the streets for years, living in encampments for years, right into housing. The vast majority of them are staying stably housed for the long term. Unlike many cities, including Spokane, coordinating this remarkable effort to reduce homelessness is led not by the city of Houston or surrounding counties, but by an independent nonprofit lead agency called the Coalition for Homelessness. Mike Nichols is the CEO, and Jessica Preheim is the coalition's vice president for strategic planning and public affairs. I mean, you really started out in kind of a rough place where HUD had yeah. you on a not good list, but yeah. that was kind of the beginning of tremendous change towards the good. Yeah, I mean, it was it was so bad that at one point we sat down with the VA and the Housing Authority, and we just mapped out how many steps it took for someone to get into housing, and it was 76 steps, and it took us on average over a year. Wow. to get someone into housing. So that was like our starting point. But, yeah. How many people have been housed, say during this magic 10 year period that we keep hearing about, how many people have you housed about, do you suppose? 24,000? Over 24,000 24, formerly homeless people are in supportive housing. I mean, we know our goal is to house people. Right. We know our vision is that only everyone will have a safe place to call home. We have a good organizational process. Hmm. And that's where you have a nonprofit, as the lead agency that brings together the city, the county, philanthropy, housing authority, businesses into having driving one direction, again, solve That's the coalition, coalition that you guys and The coalition, run. Where, where the coalition is the lead agency for the right. continuum of care, and which is this three county uh, continuum of care. So what is the continuum of care, or COC, and why does it matter to places like Houston and Spokane? The Department of Housing and Urban Development provides federal dollars and assistance to over 400 COCs, including Spokane, throughout the country every year. Houston COC, which they call the Way Home, combines the city of Houston and surrounding counties, community foundations, businesses, and other community stakeholders, public housing authorities, veterans groups, and over 100 nonprofit service providers. The 2011, many big decisions were made, but one of the most important was that we said that we're gonna have a coordinated access into housing. And that is means that when a person is experiencing homelessness and they enter the system, it doesn't matter what door they go through, whether it comes through the city, the county, Star of Hope, Search, it doesn't matter. They, the choice will be they'll get housing based on their vulnerability. Half the people who were involved in 2011 said, well, we don't need to do that. We wanna give, we want to put housing on who's gonna be most successful. But thanks to philanthropy, the mayor, the city, and uh, they got together and they said, no, we're gonna, t we're gonna focus on those who are most vulnerable and put them in housing first. And of course, the amazing part is the success rate of over 85% means it was a really good decision. Perhaps no single person has made as significant an impact on reducing homelessness in Houston over the last decade as their former three-term mayor, Anise Parker. What in your background, you know, allowed you to hit the ground running like that and create that kind of collaboration? I don't know if it was anything in my background, mm -hmm. but it was very much my willingness to expend a lot of political capital on something that would make a difference. Political capital is to spend on big, hard things. Uh, but I also spent 20 years in the oil industry doing project economics, and it all ultimately comes down to the bottom line. And our, the way we deal with homelessness across the country is inefficient, ineffective, and largely a huge waste of resources. And so I wanted to try to find a better way. Anise Parker, in many ways, is an original in a city of independent doers. The first openly lesbian mayor of a major American city, Mayor Parker was an analyst in the oil and gas industry for over 20 years and former comptroller for the city of Houston. She also had a vested personal interest in the issue of homelessness, having adopted, along with her wife, Kathy Hubbard, three daughters, 
and also a teenage son who was living on the streets. Mayor Parker effectively used her strong mayor office to enforce strict boundaries. We've had for uh, decades a, an ordinance that says you can't block the sidewalk, you can't pitch a tent, you can't sleep on a sidewalk. Houston is defined by eight small rivers that run uh, west to east, mm -hmm. and people will camp uh, along those little rivers, but they are you know, off the sidewalk and generally um, allow commerce to continue, and we expect that. When I travel to other cities, I'm shocked that, uh, to right. see essentially permanent tent cities on, on sidewalks. We've got that. Would not happen in, in Houston. So that's back to that tough love a little bit, and you would stand behind that. Element. I absolutely would stand behind that. If, if you're in a wheelchair and you're going down that, that street and there's a tent city in front of you, uh, what do you do if you're pushing a, a baby stroller? They don't have a uh, higher right to access that sidewalk than every other mm -hmm. citizen. A little bit of tough love at the front end, but we hear a lot about housing first, which obviously is an extremely we humanitarian. We did housing approach. first, that's, that's yeah. most definitely. I had a unique set of circumstances happen that prompted me to say, okay, I'm going to tackle homelessness. The heads of the Houston Housing Authority, Harris County Housing Authority, uh, Houston uh, Housing Department, Harris County Housing Department, and the head of the Houston Health Department, and the Coalition for the Homeless all changed. So I had new people, so I didn't have anybody that was this is the way we've always done it, and this mm. is mine. Right, a willingness to change. People inside City Hall weren't the only ones that had to develop a willingness to change. It extended to every key group affected by homelessness in Houston, especially the nonprofit service providers working every day to provide help to unhoused people on the street. One of those key people is Julie Falcon, Chief Advancement Officer at The Beacon, a nonprofit organization formed by the members of the Episcopal Diocese of Houston that serves the Houston homeless community through daily services, meals, civil legal aid, counseling and mentoring, and most importantly, access to housing. Julie, too, remembers a time when the system was much more inefficient than the one that they have today. Individuals that are, that are experiencing homelessness um, would, would be going to one agency and saying, you know, I, I need a place to stay. And the, the, that case manager would get on the phone and start calling to all the different agencies to find out where they could stay. And then that individual might move on to another agency and that case manager's getting on the phone and making the same phone call to find out where this Didn't have the centralized stay. data, didn't have, wow. But now you're sharing all that. Now we're sharing all that. So we're able to see that this person is being supported by this agency at this step in the process. So before everybody was working together, they're all doing their own thing, Almost a lot of chaos there. Yes. Another longtime agency doing homeless services work to get people off the streets and back on their feet is Search. I sat down with its president and CEO, Tao Costas, and Bob Urey, who served for over 30 years as the CEO of Central Houston, the city's downtown business association. They both recall, all too well, that frustrating time just over a decade ago. We had like six, seven different services that we provided from day shelter to child care, adult education, employment, you know, you name it, we had it. And, and it was costing us more than we could really manage. We were, we were too diversified and really not clearly effective in any particular one. And, and so that's the problem with any business if you try to do too much. And so that's the, the weakness of, of our mission is we had to then get focus on who are we here for and what are we intentionally needing to achieve. And so when we clarified that for ourselves, it made so much sense mm. to, to be partner with and be the best friends of the housing provider rather than us having to be the housing provider too. So now we do case management. We are the ones that are the skilled staff members who are going out hand in hand, working with the individuals that most of us don't quite know what to do and how to work with them. But our staff, they do. And they will stick with them and we will stick with them. And other uh, agencies are picking up some of the work you The used other to do. pieces, exactly. It's all done. The beacons doing a beautiful job of the, the front end. Yes. We're going on the back end. And, and partners like the private sector that Bob has brought in, you know, we're able to, to get the financial support to complement some of the public support. And so it just all gets woven in together really well. 
Over the last decade, Houston has embraced the Housing First model, a program required by the Department of Housing and Urban Development to move people experiencing homelessness directly into housing, not shelters, with few requirements, like being drug-free, employed, or religiously affiliated. Even a formerly reluctant business community has fully embraced this successful business strategy. Take most any downtown in this country, for sure, and when you really look at the list of issues that are right front and center and, and that, that down the communities deal with, homeless is up there. I feel like here it really goes back actually quite a few decades and we were beginning to work on solutions. My first sort of involvement really came more through housing. Uh, a, a few of our nonprofit plus other nonprofits, including Search, sort of got together and said, let's build a single room occupancy SRO housing. And uh, we took on a old uh, sort of tenement hotel in downtown. Mm. And uh, it only took us five years to, <laughs> to, 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 get it, to get it open and built. Yeah. Very proud of it, actually, mm -hmm. that we were able to get it done. But we did it largely, one, to begin to employ federal grant money because Houston did not have a long history of, of doing that. Right. Uh, and, and secondly, because we, we realized we did need homes for people. We needed actual shelter in, in for them. And um, I think what was great about it is is that it also became kind of a training ground for all of us involved because this, we, right. we were learning on the job yeah. in terms of kind of getting this off and going. And How did you make the business case for that mm -hmm. to your fellow business people, Bob? I mean, early on, it must have been a little bit of an exercise. This is a city full of developers, so that right. you don't have any problem really getting anybody to understand what you do when you want to develop something. You know, they, they all they all get it. <laughs> uh, but I also think it was one of those things where we also knew we need to make begin to make tangible progress, and so this this was a way to kind of get started and get moving on this uh, as we go forward. And so, uh, really, we didn't have a difficult time with it. And it, I remember, although we had a lot of federal grant money in it, we didn't have too hard a time raising other money that we needed to, to complete the project. Right. Bob's been such an amazing champion of, yeah. of this issue of homelessness. You know, I think we can recognize from a city that's this big that you're going to have a lot of people who are homeless and, and poor around the central parts. And, and so it's inevitable. Uh, but uh, you also want to do it in a, a humane and and thoughtful way and so mm -hmm. i think it's it's been great to have a partner on yeah. the business side where we've been to really stay on course mm -hmm.